I have absolutely nothing to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, everything. I could talk about a lot of things, but I really guess I really don't have anything to talk about. But I'm just sitting here with my babies. Look at that lazy look on her face. Daddy. You know, when I get her hair, look at this. Daddy. Oh, honey. Look at this. Daddy. Daddy, look. Look at that face, Daddy. Look at that face, baby Andy's been shaky in his hips, in his leg, when he lays still. And so I actually had some glucosamine cream. I didn't realize. So I've been putting a little bit of that on his hips and a little bit of Bengay. He runs fine overall. It's when he's still that I see that shaking. What, honey? So I put some of that medicine on him. Ah. <sighs> Mm. Mm. So I am much better with that back and thigh, and then I push something. I was trying to push my wardrobe around without emptying it out. And yeah, no more picking, no more straining. Okay, uh, that gave me an immediate headache and tension here, and a little bit in the lower back. I just cannot do that. I have to get help or empty it out and then move it. So I'm making myself accountable by saying that. I'm making myself accountable to that. Let me see. Maybe like that's better. Um, so, why is that? Huh. Uh, okay, I guess like that. <clears throat> anyway, I have a lot to say, but nothing to say but I guess I'm just reaching out since a lot of us are kind of at home and um, I've got my paint over there I don't know if you can see it though you can so since I've painted my bedroom four times and I hate this icy light green I hate it I hate it I hate it I've hated it since I did it two or three years ago so I'm just going to go with the color of the ceiling, which is white oak, Valspar white oak. It's just a, a white with a little bit of yellow in it. And so um, that. But thank God. I think I've lost about four pounds. That's good. And that's just from just not keeping stuff in the house, eating at home. That sort of thing, you know, and I'm really not doing bread, you know, I mean, if I eat out, I'll have bread or something, but overall, if I don't keep it in the house, I'm okay, but I do, I do have pasta, you know, I'll eat pasta. That doesn't seem to affect me, but bread does, I think, because I can feel like almost like a, a lodge or a gas bubble when I eat it, so probably better not to. But if I do eat it, I'd rather get quality bread. Like the the bakery thrift place here at 41st and 129th, you can buy that Dave's Killer Organic, yeah, <laughs> $5 loaf of bread. You can get it for $2.50, which is pretty amazing. So anyway, um, I'm looking outside. It's like under 50 degrees and I love it. I'm just not ready for the warmth. Weeds are coming up everywhere out there. But I'm just not ready for the warm weather yet. You know, this the winter, fall and winter weather is just so more so much more conducive to restfulness and good sleep, you know? But um Andy's sitting there in the sun. There's my toes. Andy's sitting in the sun, and then Trixie's here, and um, tonight is Shabbat, at least what I'll do, Shabbat, and um, you know, I posted about we're undergoing a paternity test, and 
this is for those of us in the body that call ourselves Christians. Some would say followers of Jesus, believers, you know. It's a paternity testing we're, we're going to be going through to see where we really stand. Are we really, are we 100% with him? Do we really, I mean, are we just willing to bet it all on him, you know, to just put our whole being in his hands for whatever he wants to do? And, uh, you know, that kind of testing hasn't happened on a mass scale with the body. I mean, everybody's had their individual testings where, They've been pushed into a corner, hit a rock bottom, had such a testing that they had to they had to decide um, who they will serve, who they believe. Right? Choose this day whom you will serve. But this is on a bigger scale now, and it's a good thing. And it, you know, we all we all come in to salvation in different ways at different places in our lives. Some people come in, and I mean, these people are just so happy and grateful to be saved, period. They don't come in with any other agenda or wanting stuff. They're just happy he set them free. Whatever he did for them, he is enough. They're just happy to have him. They're like, and a lot of times those people are like, whatever you want to do, I don't care, Lord. I mean, they're just, they're all the way in. And... They do about anything he'd want them to do. And a lot of those people, you know, a good number of them, I would think those people are kind of more long-term. Now, there's some short-termers that come in and get free, but then go back to what, you know, whatever. Come in desperation, but then when things cool off, you know, they're back doing what they're doing. Then there's some of us like me, we come in with the Jesus Plus plan that, we come to God because we want something from him. You know, some people, you know, it's because I want a partner, okay? Other people come in because I want stuff. I want success. I want material. I want what you can give me. It's almost like God government, like looking to God as, a, as the government, like, you know, I want to see what I can get what you'll give me. I'm coming to you because of what you have. And, you know, it's not a full surrender. You know, we know that. That's not a full surrender because a full surrender is nevertheless. It's the whatever. It's the, you know, I love you for who you are. And, um, I mean, that's, that is where I want to get to, and I know that's where he wants me to get to. That I love you whatever you want to do with me. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's rock bottom, bottom line. Where do you stand with God faith right there when you say, whatever you want to do, it is well with my soul. It is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way. Is that right? No. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever thou, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. That's a good and I'm not even a old gospel I don't even love modern Christian music really but that that's a good one it is well with my soul because that is kind of the nevertheless I would rather have this but nevertheless it's the whatever it's the blind faith open plan that I trust you that wherever you take me is going to be more satisfying than what I think I want not there yet but this is the season he's wanting to get us there, is the thing. 
So, so, you know, we come in with the different plans and contracts, you know, word of faith, a lot of word of faith was very attractive to people that I can get stuff. I can avoid pain in my life with God. I can avoid bad things happening. I can avoid loss and tragedy and poverty. I can avoid all those things. That made Word of Faith very attractive. Even though that's not really, I'm sure, the message that was initially meant to come forth. But, you know, when people get a hold of what another person's life, person's life is that's teaching this, and that's their life and what's happened, and then everybody says, well, that should happen for my life. Therein lies the problem. We each need a personal revelation of our life purpose and what he wants to do in our life and how. So that went like way overboard and created the most unloving, selfish, self-righteous, prideful Christians ever. But you know what? That That's the pattern in history of people, right? That That's the pattern of people. We have a pattern just like the Jews in the Old Testament. It's the same thing. It's called human nature. You know, when we can, we will tend to get kind of independent, on our own, I'm good. Things are, God took care of the pain. He took care of this, so we're good. So I'm just kind of going to do my, you know, go do my thing. That's just natural response, to be honest. It, it just is. If you took the suffering, persecuted Chinese or Middle Easterns out of their country and brought them here or... Well, somewhere where they didn't have to be uh, persecuted for their faith and they were free and they had good stuff and material stuff, they'd become the same way. And if we were sent over there to be in underground churches, to walk three, four, five miles to go to church, you know, um, to risk our very lives, to not have all the conveniences and comforts we have had here, we'd become like them. I really believe that. So when all these things are, all the fluff and extras might be lessened or taken away, um, you know, we find out where we, where we stand when there's some suffering or some not being able to feel secure in things we used to lean on for our security, you know. <clears throat> Ooh, I need a blanket. I need a blanket, but if I get a blanket... I gotta get Trixie up. All right, so I'll just suffer. Um. So um. It's kind of where we are. We're in a time of testing, another level of testing. And hopefully, when he's through what we've been, we just will be so different from, and just will be really. Just won't recognize me. You know what I mean? Like a makeover, you know, where someone gets a makeover and you see the before and after and you don't even recognize them. Well, hopefully we are those coals that have been under pressure in these in our lives. You know, it's not that we're a total piece of coal, but he, but we're a diamond in the rough that's getting closer and closer to its true beauty, you know, and shininess. And color cut clarity. Color cut clarity. Carrot. Color cut clarity carrot. So um, the thing about it is it's like squeezing us to get precious, beautiful, anointing, perfumed oil like the woman poured on his feet. Um, well, there are two occasions, right? Poured on his hair, poured on his feet anointing him for burial, expensive alabaster box, box stuff. That beautiful oil, that's what's beautiful to God, is when that starts coming out of us. But there is a price for it. We've lived in a very shallow level, a lot of us. And even people that have pushed in and pushed in, we're just... You know, those that have really been ones that have fasted and prayed a lot and all that, okay, and heard from the Lord. But we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen the beauty yet of what he wants to do. But that does that comes at a cost. It comes at a price. And a lot of people don't want that. They want the diamond, but they don't want to pay the price 
to do to become that because it is a surrender it is a nevertheless it is a if you want me to give my life to die for you but you know that part isn't the hardest part always it's living for him that's the hard part I think you know he might just give us a grace if we're getting ready to be martyred he may give us a grace maybe he'll give us some divine anesthesia or something you know it'll be quick but when we, you know, dying to self while we're living, walking as living sacrifices is a different deal. Day in, day out. No one has our hands tied. No one has us laying on a guillotine or being ready to, to be thrown into a pit of lions or something, you know. We have freedom. We have free choice. We're free out there to make our decisions. And that, making the choice to die, to die daily. Making the choice, Paul said, I die daily. Crucifying the, fret, the flesh. That doesn't mean looking for suffering. Living oppressed and sick and poor. That, that, that isn't, it, 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 I mean, that those things can happen. You don't look for that. It's a matter of being open to whatever. Whatever he has for you. Heck, it could mean walking with some wealth or something. You know, it could mean one of those things. Maybe some people resist and say, I just want my life simple. I don't want complicated big things, but maybe he wants to give you big things. You know, I don't know. I'm just saying it's, it's whatever to accomplish his purpose with whatever people you're supposed to influence, you know, at that time, at any given time. So dying to the flesh means whatever, whatever that is. You know, so whatever he's wanting to do that particular day, season, moment, month, year, you know, we have to be really open and flexible for sure. You know, we, he will never conform to us. We've made him into our image and we would just want to shape him and mold him and prune him back to what we want him to be because he's scary and dangerous. And, and it's kind of like a loss of control. And, and I know I'm like, what if I don't really know who you are. I mean, wow, scary. But we need fear with some fear of God. Right, we need we need some of that because the fear of God uh, is is very wise. You know, the fear of God is very protective for your life because you fear God, you're gonna make some better decisions. You know, fear not man, but fear God who can you know toss your little butt into hell. You know, <laughs> it's just, you know, what can man do to you? humiliate you, hurt you, abuse you, uh, beat you, rape you, kill you, uh, take everything you have. Yeah, man can do that, you know, under the influence of evil and their own sinful nature, but God's reckoning is a different deal. And, you know, God make, God's going to make things come out, you know. He's going to expose things, and don't ever think he's not going to judge what's been done, or what's been done to you, but when we try to take control of it, then um, then he'll step back. So we have to trust him with that too. Along with our provision, along with our health, along with him being the author and finisher of our faith and reforming us into this diamond, this, this beautiful scented oil that's anointed and that just pours out. Along with that, we have to trust him also that He'll take care of this other stuff over here, right? And we have to remember, we've done wrong to others. We can't ever just look, you know, anytime someone is a perpetual victim, beware. Anytime it's always someone else's fault, no accountability, no remorse, no ownership of what a person has done. It's always someone else's fault. They're always the one that, that made the bad happen. Beware. That's because that's a person that you just don't want to deal with 
uh, real intimately because they need to go through their, they need to go through a process because yes, we can be victimized and some people have been victimized a lot. Some people, there's no, no blame in what they've done. They've been victimized a lot. But when you have a perpetual over and over, it's just always this conversation of what other people did to them. And then when you say, well, what, what about your, your part or whatever? And, and they're always so innocent, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of times it takes two, you know, so we just need to remember that we need to own whatever's our part. It is not our responsibility to own what they did. That's on them. What's on us is we got ourselves in the situation or we made certain choices or we said certain things. We did certain things. We tried to do, we tried to get revenge on them or we, you know, slandered them or whatever we did. That's what we own and we got to get right is what we've done. We're not responsible for them. But if we will do that, oftentimes there will be a change in them because of the change in us. Because we're not stopping God and hindering him with our hate, you know, or resentments and grudges and unforgiveness and I need to get even. I need to win. <clears throat> that, what are you doing, you little monkey? Look, when there's static in the air, there's no static in the air. Look, little monster girl, how to tell you, beautiful little monkey girl. I didn't think I'd be talking about all that. Uh, some of the best talks, though, are when I just kind of like get on and say I don't have anything to say. So pray for me because I was moving that wardrobe. I'm fine, I think. But if you'll just say a prayer for me that I don't do any more picking or straining. And just for protection over me that I take care of myself and care for myself. I would appreciate that prayer, you know, to not sabotage myself. Because I want to get something done, you know, or whatever. So I'd appreciate that because I'm on the mend and feeling pretty good. And uh, along with doing our part in using wisdom and, and taking care of our life and ourself as he directs us, you know, I mean, but we do need to lean on a supernatural help. We absolutely do need to do that. You know, kind of a Teflon, <laughs> kind of a Teflon cover. I mean, I really believe that, you know, it's, we're going to be forced to put into action what we listen to tapes and CDs. And I went to this conference. It was so good. Oh my God. It was so good. Oh, this preacher was so good, that sermon. Oh, I'm favored and high, highly favored and blessed. I'm healed and all that. Well, we're going to really be faced with putting those words into action and believing them. And it won't be connected to any movement or glitz or glamour. It's a way of life. Um, it's interesting that that sinister dream I had, it, it's on YouTube. It's on the Revelation 12 video on the last half, but it is just so interesting that Italy was in that dream about the sinister dream, the van, the prisoners with masks on. They were ill. It was pathologically. Something was so underhanded and sinister and pathological, and it was sickness. I still cannot describe to you the evil I felt, but it was a sick pathological sickness, but it was evil. I don't know, but Italy was in that dream. It's just the strangest thing because when I had that dream two years ago, Italy was nowhere in on anybody's radar spiritually, unless maybe they're talking about the Pope or something, you know. So, um, so it's a day at a time, isn't it? It's moment by moment. Hour by hour, it's a day at a time to be open to each day. And I do believe that that word about kind of being under house arrest is true because uh, it makes us calm down and get focused more. Uh, that was actually, I think, Maurice Sklar that had said that. And about the, he got the word on the 16th and I don't really follow him, but I think he actually came here I think he actually came here 
I'm not sure, though. He might have come here to Tulsa back in 2013. I am not sure. I need to find that out. In 2013, which was my terrible year from hell, the perfect storm, that October they had um, victory here in Tulsa would have uh, a night to honor Israel. And I danced in that with, I was kind of invited by a woman named Gloria Vandekamp. And she has, you know, people she kind of tries to organize and, and, they, and they do kind of, they dance for the Lord, you know, kind of worship dance or whatever. And I was so oppressed at that time. I was still going through all of that physical things and this anxiety and terror. Uh, most of you probably don't know about that. But I remember going for rehearsal for that where we were going to practice. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like sweat, like terror. And I feel weak and sweaty. And you know what I mean? Like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I remember Gloria saying, dance on the devil's head, you know? Once I got out and started to practice with them and move and dance, that disappeared. But I'm thinking it might have been that Maurice Sklar that played that night. That's interesting. I'll have to find that out. Um, anyway, um, it's probably on victories on all their videos. That would have been like October of 2013. I was so young. Anyway, um, what else? Um, you know that that scripture about David, I don't know if it's 2 Samuel or whatever, when he numbers the troops, which he wasn't supposed to do that because that was a lack of faith, kind of like saying, do we have enough people to beat them? And so then he was given a choice of three punishments. One was a three-year, I think. One was a three-month where he would be chased by the enemy. And then one was a three-dayer, and he opted for the three-dayer. Thousands of people died. David's like, I'm the one that caused this. And he goes to do what the prophet tells him to do, to build an altar to the Lord and blah, blah, blah. And this man is going to provide the, the burnt offerings and this and that for him. And he says, I won't, I won't give to the Lord or whatever it is, anything that costs me nothing. You know, that's just resonating right now. Right now, just like with loving a person, it has to cost you something. It's not worth anything. The same thing with the Lord, you know. If we're really welcome, there's got to be a cost to it. So, anyway, um, is there anything else? I'm so glad it's kind of cold today. I just, I'd be okay for it to stay cold for a while. So, I don't know what each day will bring. Um, we don't know what what's going to happen with this thing, but I mean, I just don't think it's a thing and that will pass. I just, you know what I mean? The ball is rolling. So we want to be where we're supposed to be, listening, not being affected and influenced always by others, but really we, we're going to have to be, I'm going to have to be convinced within myself of certain things, fully persuaded, you know, so that I know what I believe and where I'm going. So we do need, um, we do need like-minded fellowship with each other. You know, um, I would like um, to be able to talk with a few people and, um, you know, to go just beyond online, you know, but Having our little circles important. And I've got, I mean, you know, there's people here that just in practical terms that, that I think I could turn to for help. But, um, you know, there's a reason for community. 
There's a reason God put people in families. And of course, we've gotten away from that. People don't have a lot of kids anymore. Everybody's divorced. Kids have a million dads, <laughs> a million grandparents. Everybody's scattered all over the place, right, with careers and everything. But it's really not a good thing because what ends up happening is, and of course, how can it be any different, right? We're in a fallen world, so everything isn't as it should be. But when you have community, when you have families in community, the thing about it is you don't have elderly living alone. You don't have people isolated living alone that have health problems and no one to help them. That That's the thing. I was just listening to that, the Toronto report thing today about, you know, they're elderly and this and that. That's the thing. It's like, I just, it's overwhelming to me because there's so many needs and people everywhere. I don't even know how to address, you know. They're scattered all over the place, alone, without help. They, they can't get to the store. I mean, there's just all these needs. And a lot of it is because we become such an independent, isolated society. Families are separated. People don't have real community. When I say community, I don't mean just going to church. That isn't automatically community. I mean community where you're in each other's lives, you know, breaking bread together, you know. And uh, like Mina was saying on the Thursday night Bible study about Jesus wants to break bread with us. He wants to hang out and be with us, you know, relate to us. He wants for us to relate to him. So I guess that's all. This is at 31 minutes. Okay. Um, but yeah, real community. And I just... I pray and hope that what's going to happen to us is, I mean, as he really takes us through this process of really, you know, really bringing out what's inside of us and refining us that, um, that we truly do learn what love is and learn to express that in our actions and words and uh, learn to forgive more and more and learn to see where people are and not take on so much offense, you know, um, have more empathy and, uh, and care, um, about those, you know, care more for those around us, you know, so that, those are good things, you know, I mean, those yeah, the fruits of the spirit, you know, right. That's where the beauty is, is when the fruits develop in us. Gifts of the Spirit don't mean anything without the fruit. You can be very charismatic and have no character. You know. Um, don't ever lean on the gifts for who you are. We have to have the fruits develop. We have, our fruit will show who we are. You know. You know someone by their fruits. You know something by their fruits. And that's what he wants to do in us the rest doesn't really matter if you could be doing all this and stuff and building a ministry but if you don't really you just we want fruit we want the real heart changes when when the sweet um scented fragrant sweet smelling anointing is is being poured out of us it draws people you know because there's really love in it. it. It's got God in it. So, all right. I guess that's all. 33 minutes and 47 seconds. I'll bet Facebook won't want to, won't want to take that on. Hmm. You realize we're censored? I mean, we are. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm.